Hey kids, it's Dr. James, and on this Dr. James Explains, we're looking at Ethiopian Nator, a diamond fur from Laos or Loasia. So, uh, for those of you who are older, you may remember a show called King of the Hill, and their the neighbor their neighbors, uh, Connie, you know, Con Men, and Connie were from Laos, and that's why how people from Texas learned about Laos because geography. So here's the thing: uh, two models of it, and again, this is straight up. I just did the video on Samosaurus as their cousin. I'm going to do it first on the first model. This is a Collect A 2014 uh, model. The animal was discovered in 2010. And the name Ithiovenature means fish hunting lizard. So Ithiovenature saurus means fish hunting lizard. Which is why there's a fish in its mouth. Because obviously. Now, one thing to point out with this animal is the official hull type specimen is the hips. So a few ribs. So one thing to point out is that the the, 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 bump, the part of the, the, the fail, those are on neural spines. So if you put your hand on your back, little bumps, uh, imagine those are like 10 inches long or 20 inches long. So that's what's going on here. Uh, what makes what's really fun about Ethiobinator is that, yeah, we only found the hips, but it has cousins. And this is kind of a, a, a lesson in how paleontology works. And I'm going to, this will probably be my last video on Spinosaurus for a while. Uh, Jurassic World has been putting out a lot of them. So we're going to go over that and kind of commit comparisons. So here we have Sukumimus, the Nigerian cousin from Safari. Uh, this is from, or same time, early Cretaceous period. Ethiopian, sorry, Irritator from Brazil. The well known Baryonyx from England. This is the, let's see, what are your mojo? I keep forgetting that now. And you are, I believe, Collect A? Yep, Collect A. Usually their figures are more, the smaller ones are more like dainty or delicate. And of course, here's a bruiser Spinosaurus itself. So looking at this, Spinosaurus has tall, well, six foot tall neural spines. From here along the back and part of the tail, the tail we now know has like a, almost like a tall neural spine it's called chevrons, making a fin like structure. Suchomimus has neural spines too, but they cut off like, like here. So many of these toys don't really show it. You'll see this kind of like the ridge here. But the idea is that those little bumps are the top of a neural spine. So it's, it's like, you know, a few inches tall. What makes Ithiop nature so unique is that they there's missing parts here. So you would see that, and your first assumption is maybe they didn't find those bones. But then why would they leave it out if this is the norm? So the idea is that they see this here, and they see where the, they're tall here, they're tall there. So almost like a wave like that. So that's what makes it stand out among other spider swords. Uh, Baryonyx, for example, doesn't really have a tall neural spine set, and neither do we know of that with Ithiobinator. At least it's not, it's not as obvious. They, they are taller because they're Spinosaurus, but not hugely noticeable by comparison. So when you compare comparing these guys to get that connection there. General rules apply. There are three, four uh, palm-facing hands. What we call a thumb, their first toe, is always shown a little bit larger or a little bit more imposed on Spinosaurus because of Baryonyx, whose name means giant claw. So that's something we think they use to fish the water out. The feet, now I often don't like having the toys with the uh, the base, but some thoropods just, or bipeds, two big animals, just can't balance. So we have that. But on here we see three toes, 24, duke on the back. Nothing to say that wouldn't be a thing. The second row of spines going along here, that is speculation. I, I you know, there's nothing we know about that. We don't see that. But overall, this is a pretty good model. So if you are looking for a more scientific, ac scientifically accurate Ethiopianator, this is your guy. That being said, the course is for you know for the adults and for the kids. We have here the unboxing of the Jurassic World one. Now I'll compare it with his Jurassic World counterparts, and you'll probably see it better because they're all larger figures, which is why I like them. Because when I was a kid, there weren't a lot of large figures. At least that this way, oh, they're all falling over. So what our it the of nature, which I just got this Friday, you see here basically it is uh, Jurassic World it the nature. Let's see which package it. It's the Roar Striker, yeah, it, 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 it's even later. Basically, it's, it's attack made for a repaint of the Triceratops, a repaint of the Tranodon, and a repaint of the Rajasaurus, which they actually have that one too over there. So, let's get to opening this guy. And, what do I cut? Oh, it's in there somewhere. Ah, there it is. So, the left leg has some something on it, so I'm going to reach. Performing a very delicate surgery with barbaric blades. Oop. 
Don't miss. There we go. This is oh, oh, the feeder connected. So let me go ahead and re refeed these. And we'll just reach under the thing. And yep, that's what I thought. So turn the foot. So they have these little ear instructions. They have these little things, these little tabs, and you turn them one one way, and it, and it pops off. You turn it like essentially 90 degrees, or 90 degrees, and it pops off. And there you go, a tailless, get the other nature, now the tail is in there too, which is ironic. Let's get the body out, the tail is not that hard to pull out. And we have this, we'll put that over there, we put these over here. Oh, there's no, okay, well, put me the tail, both sides have the tall, well, I would say this is a neural spine, like here going up, and if the chevrons going down, like here. The way I can tell this is the top though, is that this, there's like scales up more on this side than that side, and they usually coincide with the larger scales here, so I would say that's the top, that's the bottom. I do find the sudden tail change color, kind of weird and neat, but whatever. So here we have our Ithiobinator from Jurassic World, you push this right here, nope, is that not it? It appears to be a button. What's the what the deuce? Let's see. Is that nope? Are these not none of these are, none of these are buttons? Let's see. Is this just separate pieces of plastic? Oh no, that's a DNA code. Okay, there there you go. For those kids who just can't have a toy in their hand, it has to be online. So that's their DNA code. Putting it in the cell is pretty brilliant actually. So I think for the you just, I don't know how to make it. Okay, that's. Well, I'm doing something wrong, so let me look at the package real quick, one last time. No, it says push the sail down, so let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay, wait, nope. Okay, so put the foot down. Oh, that's different. Okay, so when you push this, the let it drops like that. See out of the hips. That's different and new. Oh, cool. So this guy has again. Uh, semi-webbed hands, like, like, we have the skin here, theirs goes to here. They're not webbed like a frog, they just go out of here, so that's kind of neat. You just do that, yeah, it's like a headbanger. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure this tail is based, based on what they, okay, so they found on the holotype, the hips, and like, like a rib or two, uh, there are neck and tail bones, other bones, that are not subscribed to Ethiopianator, but they think it's Ethiopianator, so it's a whole thing there, but Authentication. So in general, it looks like it would look like a spinosaurus, spinosaurus, but it has the missing this little groove right here. So like a wave up, and then the tail neural spine is short here again. So you're seeing it's going up and down and up and down like that, right? In general, you have your three fingers. Uh, you have your three in the front. Do call on the back. That skull. There's no skull known. So spinosaurus type. So this is from Laos. Uh, Niger source is from Niger, Africa, which is north. Western, not not north, like sub-Saharan north of Africa, or West Africa, basically I'd say that. Not on the coast, not not quite the area. So these guys are very similar parents. Uh, of course, here we have Ithiobinator from Brazil, Baryonyx from Britain. We have, of course, Spinosaurus, well, the Jurassic World version of Spinosaurus itself, the big guy right there, and of course the Amosaurus. So just like the Abelosaurus from a few weeks ago. With Rajasaurus, uh, Scorpionator, Carcarnosaurus, all these guys, they're making a lot of this one group. So I'm just, I find it very interesting they're doing that. I mean, it's something that they're not the most scientifically accurate models, but they're decent size and they are really un unknown species. So to me, that's really kind of cool that you're seeing. I mean, I love T Rex, I love Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Apatosaurus, or Brachiosaurus, like those staples of our of our collector's world are great every year they make new ones of course but it's still kind of cool to get like different species like before the Jurassic world mattel push i'm always looking for like foreign different species just to see variety of something you know that i'm reading about in the books to see it in my hand so i know collect aid and procon are really good at that making an unusual specimen here and there but mattel seems to be doing it on a again very childlike but still an example of the animal that you can't just get anywhere right so i like how they with spinosaurus in general they 
out of out of many of the thor I mean, we think of thoropod predators, we think of the raptors, the rexes, which are solarosaurs, uh, the gallimimids, they're you know, they're what well, their feathers. This is a branch of thoropods that were like they probably have feathers. You know, like we, we, we think, you know, we see different branches and say, well maybe Philophysis had them in the family tree early in the family tree, and so we see it in different groups. But with spinosaurus, if they had feathers they would have lost them because they have this crappy bit I mean this is implied in papers, but they, they, they are still avianish dinosaurs, but it's kind of like how like, in manatees, bones are different than like other mammals. They're living for the water. They're going towards the water. That is their niche partition. They, the idea is that the other sauropods they live with are terrestrial, and these guys are like on the walk, water line. They are in the water walking around. They're catching fish. We have found spinosaurus teeth in large like selfish, basically. Ooh, I didn't do that. Gravity did. We found spinosaurus teeth in a uh, Sawfish, we found iguanodon uh, bones and baryonyx. We find fish scales and baryonyx. So we're seeing that they weren't entirely eating fish, but they weren't entirely eating meat on land, like uh, red meat per se. So we're seeing, and again, the of nature has its own story, its own information, its own papers. But when you compare the whole group, you're getting a better picture of the, the, the lineage. And my analogy to you with the spinosaurids and the abelosaurids and the tyrannosaurids is like bears. They're one group. The panda, the polar bear, the brown bear, the black bear, the sloth bear, uh, sun bear. They're all bears, but they have different lifestyles, different parts of the world at the same time. Spinosaurus, of course, is like more later. These guys are all living roughly around the same time, but in different parts of the world. So we're thinking, my analogy to you is imagine them like the bears, where they're not bears for the dads out there. Um, imagine them having the same lineage, the same uh, diet or general build. But their lifestyle is different based on where they are. They're adapting to their individual environment, yet they still have the same family. They still have the same common ancestor, basically. And that's what's really important to me about seeing all of these different species together in the same spot. That's kind of cool to me, just to see that as a dinosaur enthusiast and to share it with you, my friends. And with that being said, I, I think I'm going to call it an end because next week... Who's next? I can't see from here. Who is that? Next week we're doing something different. Something that's not a spinosaurid. Or an abelosaur. I promise you. See you later.